Hello everyone and welcome to the Retro Gaming Junction. This is Camilio and we're live on Twitch pretty much every day at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, continuing our game of Fantasy Star 1. Uh, we're good. Yeah, we're good. Okay. Eh, fuck. I don't like this thing. <laughs> yeah, fuck that. <laughs> What's the purpose of that? <sighs> I hope I have enough addresses. So we're gonna go down first. Because from here we can go down or up. Ah, I think I'm gonna put back the, the axe on the guy, it was just too powerful. She seems to be doing more damage on the Marauders. Or oh, they're just... Yeah, they just have less defense than the dragon. That dragon in the original is literally the same sprite as, as the red dragon, like the boss that we fought in the other uh, cave. Which is interesting. <laughs> so we're fighting green dragons and they're that, that big thing... Well, not... But they're... They're on two legs and they're, they're a little more imposing. And then you fight at the end of the dungeon, you fight one red dragon, and that's supposed to be like the whole. We need to kill the dragon, but we just killed like 15 dragons before that. Eh? Oh, we fell! But did we explore all this? Hmm, I don't think so. No, we didn't. I forgot to change this weapon, but it's actually fine here. Does it do anything, Searchlight, here? We have so many. No! I thought that maybe it would light up a little bit more in front of us.
No, that's not what I wanted to do. Whatever. Hey, you go where I was it going? I guess. No, life is still shitty, but today was an okay day. It was an okay day. <laughs> oh, that guy might die. No, no, he's fine, he's The encounter rate in the original I checked is way lower. We're talking about half lower, like that, that low. It's... I saw someone just running around these mazes just before encountering something. At least in the dungeons. And it's it must be similar outside, because outside it's atrocious. No, I saw someone play the original original master uh, Master System version. It's different, like you'll get Marauders, but you'll only get one Marauder, and it'll be tough, instead of like, five here. And when sometimes you encounter more than one creature, you only see one, but you have like the HP. Oh, you see the HP of all the, the enemies. Yeah, he seemed to be spamming a lot of the uh, attack that attack everyone. Yeah, exactly, and that's a problem. that I get are the ones about movies because I'm a movie buff and I understand them but most of the memes on Twitter I just I'm like oh, okay. I'm a 40 year old man I just don't <laughs> it's just not my generation But yeah, I will play the original uh, second game. That I, I have decided that. I have small regrets of not playing the original Master System here, but like you're saying, it's for my sanity only. <laughs> so I'll play the second game, uh, I'll play the original. I think people re will recognize it more uh, 
Um, and I want to experience Fantasy Star 2, especially since I think it's the most popular. So I want to be able to say I've played Fantasy Star 2, so somebody makes a reference about Fantasy Star 2, I will get it instead of being like, ah, you know. I'm unsure if I'll play the original or the, if there is a fan translated version of it. If the original, the translation's good. Hey Wally Gaming, I just want to tell you I'm up to part 3 on your YouTube playthrough of the SX, cool. <laughs> Which one? Am I doing stealth? <laughs> if it's on YouTube, it must be uh, the first one, yeah. Eh, this is an invisible wall. This goes down. Okay, this is a cave. Oh, this, this brings us back to the Medusa cave? What? You're really funny in those ones. Yes. Uh, yeah, I don't think I'll buy the handbook. <laughs> but yes, I will have maps in front of me. For sure. Uh, no, I want to use the items. Uh, Atlas. That's mostly Atlas I wanted to do, but if I do that, I'm using another Atlas. You know? Because I think now we're back in the original... It must be. Let's get an enemy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, I'll just download the handbook or I'll uh, I'll check game facts or something. Oh, but I just used up my Atlas just by going there. It's cool that it connects with the other dungeon. This all connects, yes. Okay. Oh. <laughs> 
No. That's the gun you wanted me to take to uh, damage on, on everyone. And since those four are our common enemies, and there's usually three enemies on screen, it's been pretty good. I'm always trying to remember to change it back, because I do want my axe uh, for the boss. It's weird because he's, um, he still has his shield with the gun, which doesn't really make any sense. Oh no, not these guys, no, no. I hate you. Okay, so this was the B1 floor. Essentially, nothing interesting. Ah, fuck. Oh, should I just exit? Yeah, fuck it. We're gonna exit. Um, Gothic doesn't have... I don't think it has Alice's. Most useful item, it should be every everywhere. Oh, there's some. All the atlases. Look at that cash, man. So much cash. Do you want some atlases? Got some atlases. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's no problem. The problem. The problem is I need the game, which essentially means an, a flash card, like an Everdrive, which is pretty expensive. And I also need a cable to bring it to my OSSC, because I want to play this on an original Genesis. I want to play the whole, the whole series on the original Genesis. Uh, yeah, teleport to Gothic. No, we're good with that. Just save. Yeah, but fuck that, it's all emulation. <laughs> Not that I care that much, but for the Genesis, yes, I care for the Genesis. And I think... I'm not sure, but I think I will also be able to play Sega CD games and I think also um, maybe 32x, but no, uh, maybe, but mostly um, Sega Master System games. I I think with the flash drive, but I'm not certain. And another console I would like would be uh, the Turbo Graphics 16. Because if you take consoles like the PlayStation, the Nintendo 64, or even the PlayStation 2, I prefer emulating those uh, 
consoles because I do think they look like shit. <laughs> so the emulation at least brings a little bit crispiness to the texture because this looks so much better. That well, well, not so much better, but it just looks... It still looks better than in the original resolution of the game. Kudelka was a great example of, of a game that looks so shitty. <laughs> like, I've been um, spoiled by like PC graphics. I think it's on the... it's here. Ah. Yeah, I think so. Like, there's a bunch of different... Um... I could even look it up while we fight these things. It's so fucking... Or you can do 10 things at the same time. I could watch a movie and, and play this fucking game. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yes. The repetitive combat of JRPGs. Just something I can't get over. Come. Baldur's Gate will be uh, re refreshing. <laughs> it's it's like a hundred something dollars US. So, eh, expensive. For me. We have the Mega Everdrive Pro. <laughs> Cyclone 4 FPGA. Excellent. 16 meg, blah blah blah. I call it the 60 UBC support ROM format. Genesis 32X Mega CD Master System. NES, there's an asterisk, but fuck, it says NES. NES Core has limited compatibility, refer to user manual. NES Core currently supports only for NTSC system. Uh, 32X game requires 32X add on. Okay, okay. But I can still play Sega CD games though. So, yeah, no, EverDrive is, is the shit. Uh, for the Super Nintendo, I recommend SD to SNES. It's even better than the EverDrive. But these EverDrive just get, keep getting better with the generation. They keep getting... Uh, they add stuff on it. In-game menu, you can save game or return to system menu without physical reset. In-game menu support for Genesis and Master System modes. So maybe not... Uh, Sega CD mode. Oh, not these guys. I have to be careful, some of my guys might be dying here. Uh, no, we're still good. But with you, I'm gonna do this. Saves. The rest is pretty standard. Game Genie cheat support. That's the pro one. It's the most expensive one. Uh, it's available to Amazon. Are you fucking kidding me? Really? Hey, they made progress. Hey, Bass, how's it going? It wasn't available on Amazon. Oh my god, it's two hundred and seventy-nine Canadian dollars. Plus 11 for the... That's the pro one, but I, I'm pretty sure I'll take the pro one. So it's even uh, more expensive than I thought. I, I thought it was a little bit cheaper than that. 
Come on, just kill the fucking guy! Man, I just go in the fucking menu... Information? Are you on? They have less stock than before? Because before you had access to like three versions of each. Okay, Mega Driver Me blah, blah, blah. Mega Everdrive X7. That one is 198 dollars, so 200 bucks. Sega Genesis, Mega Drive, Sega Master System, 30x files. 32x, okay, that's cool. What's the problem with it? <laughs> Why is it almost 200 bucks cheaper than the other one? Snapshot saves. Sheets feature Game Genie and Play Action. No, what, what's the problem with it? Looks fine. What about the X5? On the side, they're all like five stars, every one of them. Oh. One fifty-five for the X5. Th that's mo that's my range of price, and that's what I thought I would be paying. Um, Sega Genesis, Sega Mega Drive, Sega Master System, and 32 X file support. Cheat. I don't think there's save. Just regular game, battery, backup, save. There's no um, save states. Which. <sighs> I like having save states. Even though my SD2 SNES doesn't have save states. For Super Nintendo game, usually it's okay. I still like save states, if I can. So I would, it would be 50 bucks more to get the save states, essentially. Uh, I think I'll, I'll bite the bullet. Yeah, when you say it's like all, essentially all the games, you'll be able to play on that. The pro one. Like, if I check for the N64, just for example, the price, 200 bucks. It's it's always in the 200 bucks. Uh, oh, Everdrive Me, are they cheaper on that? Oh yeah, I think they're cheaper if you order from their website. Yeah, that's what I used to do. It's just the, the interface here is just... Oh, whoops. Exactly, you're playing the genuine system and you have access to all the library. <laughs> Speaking of, <laughs> let's see. Ah. I haven't leveled up in a while. Okay, this is to get to the first floor. To get back to the first floor. What? But in an area I haven't been to though. Yeah, this is new. Oh, this is second floor. Okay. Fine. <laughs> I knew that. <laughs> it's just, I can't afford it. Well, I'll just like put some money on the side. But... It's not a thing about people understanding, it's about paying the bills.
up with the fucking Rogan name? I have no more space for anything here. Escape plot, discard, yes. Igor trying to con you into buying now a link costume a mega drive no not mega drive a genesis is the that's 400 bucks the pro one but I don't think I'm gonna take the pro one I don't even know what the advantages of the pro one is compared to the x7 except like in game menu like an overlay menu fuck that okay if it has save states, and I only just one state, save state is fine. Like my um, the EverDrive for my NES has one save state, and it's fine. If on top of that I have access to Game Genie codes, I can do something like Infinite Continue or Infinite Live. So don't really have to bother with save state, you know, there's always things you can do to circumvent it. The save state is just some kind of crutch to, if, if there's any problem, I can use the save state. Let's save. It's a temple, it's a temple, it's not a tower, so it, does, it doesn't have to have five floors. Before we encounter Medusa, <laughs> let's change the weapons here, the Great Axe. Okay. No. You need to listen to your Uncle Igor here and shut out whatever scratch this thing costs. There's an interesting concept, yes. There's a uh, 100 bucks here where the patron chooses a game and the guy has to play and record it all the way through. Who's gonna pay a hundred bucks? I have to play it all the way through and record? That's already what I'm doing. Can you please tell me how, the, how much these people have subscribers on YouTube? Because I know you're more of a YouTube guy. Exactly. I'm sitting on Twitch money. It's my retirement money, man. I need it. You want me to take my retirement money to buy an Everdrive? subscribers or followers of those people. <laughs> exactly. No, I won't be able to retire. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, we've done that. That's all done. 
Oh yeah, we'll have to go back now. All the way now. Oh, they're done. 12 k 12k! Exactly. 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 12k subscribers on YouTube. I'm not there yet. I'm at 500 on YouTube. <laughs> And I'm, I'm not even able to touch 200, uh, 900 on Twitch. I've been floating between 890 eight, ni and 900 for about like two months now. It's almost a joke. So yeah, and in case you haven't figured it out, I'm not in this for the money. This is not my job. And yeah, that's it. I will not make it on YouTube. I will not make it on Twitch. Even the ones that are making it on Twitch, let's say Retrograde Tom or maybe even Cinetar, they're just barely scraping the barrel to survive and I know Tom has a side job so yeah unless you have like a hundred thousand subscribers I'm not joking a hundred thousand subscribers now you can live off Twitch <laughs> and a hundred thousand subscribers or not subscribers followers on twitch in the retro community of casual gaming of variety retro casual gaming of retro variety casual pc gaming which is what i'm doing there's no one even close to that it's only the speed runners that can do that and even those guys have jobs. They're just at that number of followers because they're speedrunners, not because they grinded on Twitch for six or seven years. You have to be realistic because, oh my god, when you're gonna fall, you're gonna fall from high, my man. Oh, shit. Uh, oh, it's just here, though. Let's save, we must be getting there. Slowly but surely. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. No, that's not... That's not true. Uh, subs doesn't mean anything, it's just the views. And it's not even the views, it's mostly the, the time that... If somebody just views your videos for one second, it's worth nothing. You have to stay there. And even they have to watch the ads. Ideally, they have to click on the ads. That's where the real money is. <laughs> Nobody clicks on the ads. So they make they put more ads, of course, right? You don't click on the ads, so let's put more. <laughs> and more. And more. And more. And more, until they click on it. But they click less and less. The more we put ads, the less they click on it. <laughs> it's an interesting concept. I mean, ads are completely broken. Publicists don't know what to do. Brands just exist because there's video games about them, because there's movies, 
Not because there's ads. It's not the same as when I was young, when there were ads of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle and Masters of the Universe. No. Not anymore. If you're a brand right now, it's because you were a brand in the 90s or the 80s. This is all a dead end. There's fuck all here. Okay. okay. <laughs> I thought this brought me back to some place I wasn't before. So I, this should be the end. Come on. Yeah, I got some Bitcoin. That I do. So there's that. I got that going for me. <laughs> if ever I make money, it's not gonna be on Twitch, it's certainly not gonna be uh, my main job, it's gonna be the Bitcoins. That's my retirement money. It's not about retirement, it's just being like trying to survive when you're old and decrepit <laughs> and you can't do shit. Because chances are I won't be able to play video games. So. There's another floor. Okay, but it still look looks like we're getting. Oh yeah, I hope so. No, no, I I hope to gain till at least seventy if I get there. I'm looking at people that are 70 right now and they're fine. They could play this, especially this. <laughs> We're not talking about Doom or anything. Uh, I'm, mm, I'm not going in the right direction right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to get there. What do you mean? We'll be our kids. <laughs> They'll pay for us? Eee. They'll have even less money than us, so... Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I didn't want to have kids because I didn't want to bring them in this fucked up world. But what is done is done. It's been a while. <laughs> and it'll level up would, would be cool, but those level up are not doing anything. We level up, but it's... It's not noticeable. Not, nothing's noticeable. We're doing about the same damage that we've done like about three streams ago. Since level 30, we kind of hit some kind of plateau where... We're essentially always battling the same types of enemies. Hey, man from the wall, how's it going? Oh, I just attacked enemies that are easy to beat. <laughs> the annoyances come from the stone guys, because they have too much HP, but they don't give... They're not generous in XP, so fuck that. <laughs> eh. Life's been pretty crap.
Like this guy. I definitely don't want it because this guy's gonna let me 5,000 bucks. And that's your normal. Like, that's pretty much everybody gives me 5,000. XP, I mean. XP. All the encounters are between 4,000 and 7,000 if I get uh, two, two, drag two green dragons, is the, the, the best encounters I can get. Let's save again. I feel we're close to the end of this dungeon. No fun. I have so much money, I'm just shitting money right now. Ah, oh, fuck. So many atlases. When I read that, oh yeah, there's an item in this game that you can use to have auto map, and I was like, yay! But it costs money, oh, I was fuck. Oh. I was afraid that money would be a problem. No, we just got another 10,000 bucks. What's here though? Was this a dead end also? No. Oh yeah, I think it's a little too high. This dungeon is okay, I mean, it seems different than the other dungeons. Like, no encounter for a while here. But other dungeons have been worse. On the, on the main map, um, I think it's a little too high. But I compared with the uh, Master System version, and it seems the Master System version, the encounter is, is less. Fifth floor. The Abion Tower had like four floors. This is a temple, come on. The battle a little bit here. I shouldn't even, because the game is just too easy at this point. Yeah. It's about 99%. <laughs> it was 90%, but tonight it's been 99%. <laughs> The guy I watched on YouTube was running from enemies and seemed to work also in the, the Master System. This also goes up. Oh. Ten. <laughs> ah, fuck. Yeah, reducing the encounter rate would have helped because if you don't grind the game the game would have become a little bit more difficult like just by itself just because you would be lower level because you encountered half i would have ch chopped it in half <laughs> okay here i can go up is this level six Yeah, the bosses are pushovers. Oh, but the bosses didn't really look like problem problematic in the original either. At this point, the guy was like level 27 or something, so the, the levels seem to be scaled differently. Oh, 
level 7! Can you believe this shit? Oh, this is it. Right? No, it's not. Wow. Save. Let's go. Like I'm gonna die. Is that Medusa? Be careful, Meow. She can petrify you. I can sense incredible evil emanating from her. Evil. The rematch is on. Let's go. Yo, she bitch. Let's go. <laughs> um. Attack, attack, attack. No, no, no. <laughs> Wait a minute. It's her that has... Oh yeah, tell it. Usually that's pretty powerful. Sixty. Wow. Wow. Oh that animation of the snake going in is nice. She has a snake for an arm. Let's attack with him, see how much damage that does. Oh! Am I petrified, petrified? Like forever petrified? I can still, like, attack, which is kind of interesting. I can queue my attack, but I'm still petrified. So I might have some item for that. Um... No. But she's petrified, she's not paralysis. Mm -mm. I have a magic though that might help. Technically, he has the mirror shield, so he shouldn't be able to be petrified. Attack. What's that on the left? That little icon with the blue thing. What the fuck is that? This might work. Let's try this instead. There you go. Even with just him, I would beat her. <laughs> That's how, s how smug I am. Yeah, I'm expecting him to never get petrified and always miss when, when she tried to petrify him like she just did. Oh, I didn't check fire if it did damage. He might be the only one who has cure though. Yeah, I don't have cure or something. Uh, let's 
try this. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm pretty sure he cannot be petrified. So at, at the end, it'll be me and you. <laughs> uh, Tyrone and... Uh, Tyrone, which is called Odin, I think, in the original? Let's, let's seal him up. Oh. Is Meow also Meow? Oh, the problem in the original also, it, it, it had to be four letters. So all the names had to be truncated. So Odin worked. Lutz worked, but I don't think they liked Lutz. So Lutz became... Lutz became something else. I can't remember. Noah. <laughs> I was about to say Jeff or something. A more, let's say a more traditional name than Lutz. Fifty damage is not too shabby. Ten thousand XP. That's like almost a normal battle. It's two two normal battles. The Conian axe. Yes, yes. I like Tyro. Having a character in my party named Odin, that just doesn't work. We are done. <laughs> and the villain will be less sick, not less cheap. That's stupid. <laughs> it's yeah, it's less sick indeed. Nah, it's pronounced lechiek. Le lechiek? Maybe. I don't know how it's pronounced. The shit or ass cheek. Oh, <laughs> ass cheek. That's awesome. A ass cheek. <coughs> With the consult now. Master Tajim met with the Desorians in the past. We should too. <laughs> Remember to chill out, Tyrone. I'll never be reckless again. That's my pal. Okay, so I think we have to change planet now. Like, have we done everything? I'm gonna check your map. Fantasy Star 1 map. Images. Uh, low R Albion floating. Uh, that's done. That's done. Mm -hmm. That's all that I can do has been done. I cannot enter Scion Prison. Uh, what about this one? That's Casbo. Yeah, Casba we've done, Yuzo, Paseo, Maharu Cave, Sophia, that's all done. Okay.
Drew Pass. Really, I I prefer the meow here than the original. I don't even remember what the original looks like, but I don't know, it looked like a normal cat or something? Then Kazoo Star 1 Meow. And they're, sh they're showing me the, the new one. Oh, you're right. No, he was cuter in the original. But he didn't have that spunkness that this one has. It looks like a Pikachu. Oh, in the original, it looks like a Pikachu. You're right. The original looks way more pikachu is than this one. <laughs> is that what you mean? Because <laughs> that's what I'm seeing. Because it's yellow. Now it's not yellow, it's like orange. Well, brown. Blonde. It looks way cuter. Oh, it's a positive thing that it looks like a Pikachu. You know, that's the difference between me and you. There's a, di there's a generation gap, literally. Like, for me, Pikachu is not cute. <laughs> I am not a Pokemon guy. Hey, Johannes, how's it going? I never played Pokemon, I only know Pikachu and... I don't know. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Without offending anyone. Oh yes. Even when I was a kid, I thought Pokemon was childish. But Johannes, you're... Yeah, you're younger than me, you're like 34 or something, right? 36, something like that. 37. 38. Yeah, no, I'm... Um, no, no Pokemon, no... Um, Power Rangers, no, no Power Rangers. Just, I just missed the Power Rangers boat. Every thousand years, a solar eclipse blankets the planet at night. Tradition says that the eclipse torch protects us during that time. When I was when I saw um, uh, Power Rangers, I was like, "But I used to watch a thing when I was young that was exactly like Power Rangers." But when I was like five or six years old, because it was all the same thing. It's like all connected. <laughs> It was called, I can't remember what it was called, but it was like giant uh, tigers. It was all tigers. It was a big black tiger and all the tigers. And they all formed the big, the big like dude, exactly like in Power Rangers. And then Transformers did essentially the same thing. And then there was uh, Power Rangers. So when Power Rangers came out, I was like, holy shit, are you kidding me? Thundercat. No, not really. Thundercats wasn't that. Thundercats was not... No, it was human. They were human. I'm trying to find a, some kind of reference, but yeah, it was a cool show, I loved it. I think so, but I think it was a Japanese show, uh, translated in French. Tiger King, no, that's not it, right? <laughs> Swat Cats, no, much, much older than that.
Let's go on YouTube and type um, Robot Anime Series Tigers. The top 10 mechs and animes. That's not it. Nah. It was very. It was kid friend. It was kid friendly. Oh! Voltron! Voltron! Like, you know Voltron. Everybody knows about. Oh, fucking Voltron. Oh, Voltron was the shit. Oh, I'm just seeing the animation again and I'm just. Oh my god! The memories are rushing in! Crazy. <laughs> Voltron. Yeah, that, that's what I was saying. I didn't say it wasn't animated. It was animated. Fuck, Voltron was the shit. Lions, okay. I was, I'm was. i sorry, it was Lions. Nostalgic 26. Ah, <laughs> oh, but man, Voltron. So I used to watch Voltron when I was like five years old, maybe. Voltron. That was... I need to watch it again. I haven't watched it in all those years. 83, 85, so I was literally five years old when that came out. And that just captured my imagination. Voltron is the reason why I like big robots. And why I like the like, kind of mechanical stuff and tech stuff. Assembling, transforming. I really like transforming stuff. Like in uh, the. Anyways, yeah. Transforming stuff. I had the Voltron, like, dude. The, the, the toy. Oh, god damn it, man. Ah, oh, man, I used to love the shit out of Transformers. I wasn't a G.I. Joe guy. I was oh, Transformers all the way. It was. My evolution of like my best animes, like my best series, my cartoons when I was young was essentially Voltrons, Dungeons and Dragons, because um, it was a show, Dungeons and Dragons, Masters of the Universe, Transformers, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Reboot. That were like the top for me, like those were the top shit. Like I, I all the other stuff under was really great also, but these were like stuff that really defined my 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 childhood. Reboot was pretty much the last uh, cartoon, which wasn't really a cartoon, but it was a little bit mature, so I was able to watch it even though I was like 16, 17 years old maybe. So when I was watching Reboot was when that uh, uh, Power Rangers was, was on. And I did watch a couple of episodes on Power Rangers. I do admit that it was kind of fun, but I was still like, it was just too young for me. I was just way older. Shadow Raiders, yeah, that was the one with the same actor and... Yeah, I think I watched a little bit of it. I couldn't get into Shadow Raiders. Beast Wars was great. Uh, I had the whole, like, uh, yeah, we'll take a little break here. <laughs> Beast Wars, but also Beast Machines. I don't know if you know about Beast Machines. Oh my god. <laughs> the layer of dust. But yeah. Beast Wars, the first season on DVD, the whole fucking thing. I was never really big into Beast Wars. I came into it like afterwards, because like I said, reboot was the last, the last thing. Anyway, the second, the third season, which for some reason are much smaller cases, and then we have Beast Machines. I started with Beast Machines, even though that's the sequel to Beast Wars. And I liked it. Um, 
but I understand now why people don't like it. Like after watching watching this and after watching Beast Wars and understanding why they had to go there. They had to go there because of the violence. It was getting like we need less and less violence, we need more like spiritual stuff. And I like like there's a little bit more spiritual even though like Transformers spiritual stuff, you know. I don't know, it, it's it's if you haven't seen Beast Machines and you like Beast Wars, I, I would recommend it. It's different. So at least there's that. It's not the same old shit again and again and again, you know? It was more somber. Yeah, well, not... Yes and no. Because in, uh, in Beast Wars, like, people died. It was dark. It was dark and it looked. It looked colorful, but it was dark. Beast Machine looked more mature, but was it more mature? Not really, because the violence was toned down, like, to nothingness. There was no more violence at all, I think. I can't remember that much. I did like uh, Megatron in this one. Megatron in this one is really... He's like an entity. And that was nice. Like He was like more like a Tron, dude. Like... He, he con I think he controls Cyber uh, Cybertron because this is all on Cybertron, which I liked. Like finally, we're getting off Earth, which is so fucking boring to me. <laughs> I, I'm always a Cybertron guy. The three first episodes of Transformers are just a beauty, even to today's standard, and I would highly recommend. Um, a documentary on Netflix that's, that's called The Toys That Made Us. It's like... It, it was supposed to be an 8-part documentary, but it became more parts, but they talk about uh, the Transformers, E-Man, G.I. Joe, Teen, Teen Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, Barbie, uh, My Little Pony, uh, Power Rangers, and a bunch of other toys like that. But they, they go through so many things about... The toys, they, they, they dabble into the series, of course, when they talk about uh, Masters of the Universe. But, um, where was I going with it? Anyway, I would recommend that uh, and check out the Transformers. Oh yeah, they explained that, why the first three episodes of Transformers are so um, good. It's because they really put all their fucking ideas in that. And then they gave the rest to like other writers that would just write the rest of the serial and being a little more kid-friendly and less story-driven. More about like pushing new toys because it was it was an ad, an ad for for these toys, but they did hire really good writers and 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 people that were passionate about the product or not even passionate about the product but passionate about about making something for the kids and like that, that people will, will like. When I was nine, when I saw last Megatron fight in Beast Machine, I was he seemed way more threatening in that show. The last fight shocked me when I saw it. Yeah, like I said, Megatron in Beast Machines for me is the ultimate Megatron. That's the Megatron that I always wanted because Megatron in the original Transformer is kind of a He's kind of a little pushover, like he's 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 a whiny bitch. Not as much as Starscream, but he's still or Skeletor in E-Man, because Skeletor is really just a whiny little bitch. And when you check Skeletor in the first couple of episodes, he's not that bitch. He, he becomes the show became a little bit more kid friendly because supposedly, well, it must be true, they had like. A bunch of psychologists and people like breathing down their necks and like no you can't do that in a kid show no you have to do that no oh and put those little like morale at the end of those shows like remember in the 80s almost every kid show had that little morale at the end that was there to kind of compensate with if there was violence they would put a little morale at the end and hey kids you shouldn't do this or you should do that and that made it okay so weird I feel that today they don't have like psychologists and people like that supervising every episode or every fucking cartoon that comes out on Netflix or Prime because I look at what's on my TV and 
such shitty show for the kids. I'm such shitty shows for for my kids. I'm looking at them and they're like, oh my god, it's so bad. And even my kids know that it's bad. Like they watch it and afterwards they're like, they never talk about it anymore and they never want to watch it. But you show them like good shows, like something like uh, like Paw Patrol. I guess is okay. I mean, I watch a bunch of episodes and that's an okay show. <laughs> It passes my standard. It's not as good as the shows that I watched when I was young because I think they they were a little bit more mature. Now it's too dumbed down. Like you can you can talk to a six years old. I like, can bring stuff that would be appropriate to a seven, eight, nine, or even ten years old, depending on how you approach it. But if you just approach a six year old with something about and like not more than the six or five years old he's not gonna evolve you know you need to bring these kids like a little bit <laughs> anyways uh, I'm gonna take a little break here and we'll come back with more <laughs> we'll stop talking about uh... we start with Voltron it all started because I'm sure it was all Joanna's fault <laughs> Something like that. We talked about kid shows and generation gap, and then I talked about poke. You you brought out Pokemon, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Nostalgia is one hell of a drug. Okay, so be back in a couple of my uh, minute, and uh, I'm back. I keep myself wailing in it sometimes. <laughs> Wailing? Anyways, I'll be back. The town of Dearborn has a bit of a problem. To stop them. Come on, I got plenty for everyone. Kiss my boomstick. Ooh, that gotta hurt. Come on now. Evil dead. Shut king. A fistful of boomsticks. <laughs> I just think it's so cool when the parts go flying like that. Rick M for Mature. THQ. Hail to the king, baby. Hail to the king.
my back. Okay. There is an axe, a sword, a shield, and an armor made from sacred Laconia. The only shield and armor are hidden on Desiris. So, shield and armor on Desiris. But we already have the axe and the sword. Okay. There's also a dragon here. Atiplano Plateau is blocked by ice, it's off limits. We'll need an ice digger to get there. Oak bar sells that. We need an ice digger. I hate those lying Desorians, fibers, all of them. Fibbers! I'm serious, you can't believe a word they say. I've heard rumors that a frost dragon lives on this planet. I'll terrify you. Where is it? I don't know. Ask the Zororian for that. Going to Oakbar, you'll need a Desorian ring first. The market sells them. Buy one so you can talk to the Zorians. This is Skur, a climate controlled Palman colony. Welcome. We're surrounded by ice, but it's a hot day in here. Hey, shut the door. Atlases, uh, Desorian Ring. That's it. Iron Claw was like a great weapon. <sighs> I don't know, I'm gonna keep the Iron Claw. Rail Gun. Rail Gun. Oh, that might be nice. Yes, equip it. Oh, and you can't sell the axle, it doesn't. Uh... Can't sell the axe. Oh yeah, was the Laconian axe, right? Diamond armor, yes sir. Quit, yes. Okay. Eh, we should have come here f a while ago. Could have some gotten some good items here. So she has a Laconian sword. He has a Laconian axe, but we're gonna use the railgun for now. Okay, we have two of the Laconian things. The elusive native disorient live in a single town, Okbar. Okay, Old Bar sells the ice picker. So I need to get the Old Bar. Oh, this is the Skur Pass to come back. started there. Yeah, yeah, we started here. When I came down here. Okay. What's the point of this?
the Zorian. Okay, they give 10,000 each. That was a long and boring fight. Counter is pretty much 1000 XP. What is this? Kirk Pass. I'm not gonna go there now because I don't know what's there. Let's remember there's a Kirk Pass. I need to stop attacking all the first. This guy plus a couple of attacks on me should be enough. So attack this. Well, now I can continue doing that. Oh.
I guess I had to go in that cave. Okay, I'm gonna fight, I'm gonna fight. Fuck it. I'm gonna try here. damage. Ouch. Can I teleport to spaceport? Oh yes, please. Oh. 
Yes. Ah, fuck it. I took a chance there. Okay, I was unlucky twice in a row. Not so bad, but Does it look like the original? I can't even find any images of them. Anything to me. <laughs> they look like disorients. Five already? Holy shit. Okay. Oh. 
Indeed, but still, still, this... Like, it's... I have difficulty playing three hours of this. Honestly. I can easily say that. I can also say that I've... Mm, I've somewhat difficulty doing three hours of uh, Colossal Cave Adventures, but... It was not difficult to do 3 hours of Fallout 2. It's not difficult to do 3 hours of Morrowind. It's difficult to do 3 hours of Morrowind because I want to do more. Um, if I stop it's mostly because I'm tired. But I'm looking at the time and I'm like, holy shit, it's only been 2 hours. Of Vulcan. The simplicity of it, I cannot get over it. It's why I don't really play those old games before, but it's fine. I wanted to play Fantasy Star, I'm not gonna like shit on the game. It's just, I find it boring. Like, fights have to be more than just attack, attack, attack. So, I know there's elements, I could put, I could min-max my elements on my swords, but every time I encounter new enemies, like, I'm, I don't know what these elements do, and I have all the elements on my swords and stuff, and it doesn't look like they're really weakened by anything. So it's just attack, attack, attack. Okay, if I could somehow regain my magic, I would use a little bit more magic with my magic guy. But I've been using magic a little bit, and it's not that great. That stuff hits a lot. Or Yoda? Or the Grinch? <laughs> Or Grogu? <laughs> is name Kins? Is that the the species of Yoda? Because I think Yoda, I, I when when the Mandalorian came out, I was like, what? They don't know? They don't have a name for that species? And no, I don't think they never named the species of Yoda. <laughs> the, the Beverly Hills. These uh, skeletons are and wraiths, uh, specters, whatever. I like them. I like the design of them. They look scary. Scary, but in a still cartoony, uh, non-threatening way. You know. <laughs> when I played, what was really appealing was mapping and exploring. And with you. The combat can get tedious. Exactly, and I don't, I don't like mapping, so. <laughs> it's my own fault. I like when the game does the mapping for me. But the exploring... Uh, there's not much exploring. It was appealing back then because there wasn't many games like this, if any. So it's like, whoa! An RPG that I can explore in different planets. 
It's sci-fi fantasy. I can definitely see the appeal back then, but some game, some game, have aged better than others. I don't. I have a feeling the Fantasy Star games will be a little bit of a letdown for me. Like people talk more about Fantasy, uh, Final Fantasy, and Chrono Trigger, and even Dragon Quest, which I don't really like, than Fantasy Star. But I've heard good things about Fantasy Star. So either it's really good and not many people played it, so... Uh, like, a lot of people just don't know that it's good, so they're all Final Fantasy, Chrono Trigger, whatever. Or it's because the people who played fin uh, Fantasy Star didn't play all of the other RPGs, so they thought that Fantasy Star was the shit. But if they would play Final Fantasy, maybe they would be, oh my, Final Fantasy is way better. But if I compare this to Final Fantasy 1, I don't know, I would have to go back to Final Fantasy 1, but it was super grindy. And it was mostly go to the next town, pass a uh, a cave or something and go to the next town, do a thing at the next town and go to the next town. That was my experience with Final Fantasy 1. Until you get like the ship and the airship, the airship. When you get the ship and the airship, yeah the game just opens up and it becomes so good. So good. Cause like this came out when JRPG is story. Let's do that. Uh, I lied. Dragon Slayer. Legend of Zelda. I, uh, I don't know these games. Dragon Slayer 2. The Dragon Slayer series. Xanadu. The Xanadu series. A proto material. The Golden Age was the 1980s, 90s Dragon Slayer 4, which is not even still. What? What about quests? Oh, yeah, there you go. Prior to mainstream titles such as Dragon Quest and Final Fantasy eventually, uh, but before that, there was. <laughs> barely mentioned that. Forgotten origin of the GRPG on the PC. I just want a history of games, like a series of games. Okay, I'm on I'm on dates. Fantasy Star One. And the star one is 87. Oh, whoa. Final Fantasy may have predated that. Final Fantasy is also 1987. December of 1987. December of 19. Are you shitting me? The first Final Fantasy came out December 18, 1987. And Fantasy Star came out in December 20, two days after Final. I did not expect that. Oh my god, I should have done that earlier. They're, they literally came out the same day, almost. Hello, Ghost Ribbon. How's it going? Megami Tenzai 1. What, what's that in English? I do not know that series. I don't know that series at all. Here it says Super Famicom, Turbo CD. This looks super recent. Oh, 
okay, okay, okay. I think I got the, the NES one. <laughs> the Famicom one. Digital... Digital Devil Story. Holy shit, that looks awesome. <laughs> we need to play this. Digital Devil Story. It is awesome. Yohannes says it is awesome. Oh, I, I, I saw. I didn't play it, but I saw it on the Super Famicom. I recognized the guy on the the thing on the the cover, but in the Super Famicom, isn't it a side scroller? I'm pretty sure it's a side scroller. No, it's not. I'm pretty sure there's a side scroll in that series, no? You saw me play it, maybe. Yeah, a guy that boots into computers and is attacking in the computer. <laughs> I think he has a whip or something. It's on the Famicom. I remember the graphic being Famicom-ish. Maybe the Genesis. No, that's also an RPG. Action, action game. A list of video games. Anyways, we, we have completely gone off track tonight. Um, we're outside now, right? We're on the other side. Oh yes, I think that's it. It's not the same. I thought the cover looked like the blue guy. It reminded me of, of that. <sighs> yeah, attack, attack, attack. It's fine, man. <laughs> it's when I go off track that I get the most like interaction with you guys, and that's what I, why I stream this. To interact with you guys. It seems that if I'm just playing the game, nobody talks about anything. Which is fine, I guess. Or they don't want to distract me. Because yes, I do get distracted. A A7 was a golden year for JRPGs. Yes, it seems like it. Yeah, if I... I would have to go with Final Fantasy if I compare Final Fantasy to this. Because, and even the remaster, which has more spells, more items, more stuff. I've seen the original, I've played a little bit of the original, and it's, it is so basic. It is a basic RPG, at least in Final Fantasy. Even though I don't like the leveling up system, it's quite unique, quite different. The magic system is is Dungeon and Dragon. You need to rest to get back your spells. So you have your cleric has two cure spells. That's it. He has two cure spells, and you choose your spells when you rest, and that's it. You can't even choose your spell before. It's the worst thing ever. But I think... Oh, she's dead. But I think... That... It's OP. Because... One of the, the best theme was... A fighter... A ninja, a ninja, or it, it starts off a thief, the thief sucks ass, but the ninja kicks ass. So you want the thief, so you take like the fighter, which becomes a knight or something, like the fighter, the thief, a white and a black mage. And that is a shitty team to start with. Oh my god, is it crappy. Dragon Quest, I feel, is again too simplistic. 
Um, especially since Dragon Quest 1 is just one character, so it's even more simplistic. You need a team. And 3 is a m m bare minimum for me. I prefer 4, even 5. Give me 6, give me 8. I prefer I prefer 4 or 5. 6 is okay, 8 is a bit too much. But I still prefer 8 to 3. 3 is just... No, no. Fuck you, 3. 3 is not enough, and 2 is just... What? And 1 is... 1, you have to completely rewrite the thing. Like, you have to give your character many, many abilities so that there's some kind of tactics in combat. Because if not, it's just an attack, attack, attack button press like I'm doing right now. Yeah, I don't see the appeal in going through the dungeons, especially if you've already played it. Like it was appealing when I was young, but now I just I've been spoiled by by other games. So I want to focus on I still love exploring, so give me like ton of stuff to explore. That's why I love Final Fantasy VI. God my god, is there so many optional stuff and it's jam-packed with stuff. And there's no quest log, there's no this is a side quest, no it's just there. You find it and it always feels like you're the first one who ever finds something. And you'll talk to your friends about it, maybe they'll find it, they find it or something, but... It's not like Final Fantasy VII where... Like I can almost count on, the, on one hand the number of secrets in the game, and they almost telegraph to you the secrets. The game like tells you this is a secret and this is the ultimate ultimate secret of the secrets. I don't know. It feels manufactured. It doesn't feel like the world. In Final Fantasy 3 you have to Final Fantasy 6 you have to make a choice eventually between the, the ultimate magic and the ultimate sword. And the ultimate sword doesn't look like the ultimate sword at that time, but you can do something to that sword to make it even better. And then, maybe it's better than the spell, but it's debatable. It's very debatable. Now, everybody can get the spell. Because with the sword, you can learn the spell. Like you learn with espers in that game. But you'll never get the summon. Which I think is Carbuncle. It doesn't seem like much. I think it's that. Or it's the ultimate... Which... I think it's that. Carbuncle gives you ultima magic or some shit. It's really weird. Maybe I'm wrong. But I think the summon Carbuncle also transforms uh, enemies into items and then you can get like items there that you can exchange in the Coliseum. And it's all interesting, like, I, I'm, I'm not in the... I don't like alchemy in games and like merging items and stuff like that, but... I don't know, that it's a little mere, bit more interesting for some reason. The ultimate secret is the ultimate secret is what is the ultimate secret of Monkey Island? Hey Ozzy, how's it going? Maybe you'll find it in your box. <laughs> Maybe it's gonna be in there. Dude, I would literally put that... Th there's a, um, a macaron, a badge of like, ask me about Loom. I would, I would proudly display it while streaming. Especially if I'm streaming some LucasArts game. Please ask me about Loom. I'm not opening it. You bastard! will miss out on the joy that is inside the box. So I could literally sh send you a box with like a brick in it and tell you there's that in it.
And you would be happy with it? Tells the Monkey Island Collector's Edition is still silly. Yeah, but I don't think that's gonna be worth shit even in 50 years. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> that box, maybe. But not the Tales of Monkey Island Collector's Edition. That's nothing. Tales of Monkey Island. Come on. Come on. If you have a sealed monkey, secret of Monkey Island, though. Ooh. If it's a collection of anything, it doesn't get open. So if it says collector's edition, I was talking about that with my wife today, collector's edition. They slap collector's edition on it and boom, a hundred bucks more. Like I was saying that like Star Wars Legos are almost um, made for adult. Just look at the price, just the price alone, you're like, oh my god. <laughs> Legos are expensive, but do you want the, the the Millennium Falcon in Lego? Okay, do you have 200 bucks? Oh, they were um, model like um, little like model plastic models that you glue and models. That's how you call them, right, in English? So you had a Y-Wing and an X-Wing and I was like, where's the fall and the Millennium? And they were pretty expensive, like a hundred bucks or so. maybe a little less than a hundred bucks. And I'm like, where's the fucking Millennium Falcon? Oh, there it is, it's a huge box and I just bring out the box and 399, 999, uh, $399.99 and I'm like, oh, okay, that goes back. <laughs> Oh my god. It's just because it's the Millennium Falcon. Like, I would have bought the fucking X-Wing, maybe. At a reasonable price. But it wasn't... It was Paul... Paul Dameron's... Shit, and it's like full, it's orange, and I don't like it. <laughs> I like a fucking X-Wing from any of the original Return Empire, whatever, New Hope, I don't give a shit. At that point, I almost want to take the Y-Wing. It still says like Y-Wing from the newer movies, but it looks like, the, I think it says Resistance Y-Wing. <laughs> But fuck it, it's a Y wing. It does. I, I'm sure there's a difference somewhere. I'm sure there is. I'm the type of guy who literally thinks, and I know that I'm right, that when they came out with the solo movie, they had to put the fucking thing in the the, and that was a it was a big mistake. I'll get to that. The the thing in the. The Millennium Falcon to make the Millennium Falcon different so they could sell different Millennium Falcon, different Lego Millennium Falcon, different Playmobil Millennium Falcon, different other company Millennium Falcon. You know, Star Wars has branched out in many, many, many uh, come They license their, their product to many companies. But doing that is a, a huge mistake. It's like that Paul Darren X-Wing. I would have taken the generic X-Wing, but you want to change it. But the thing is, the X-Wing, the, the Millennium Falcon, it's a brand. It's a thing. Like, I'll show you something cool. This, this is the Millennium Falcon with the dish there that's important with a round dish don't go put a fucking square dish there that's not the no don't do that you're <laughs> no <laughs> so what is it? dragon ball z collector's edition ps2 by the way that's from the uh, it's called the X-Wing Miniature Game, or just X-Wing. I think it's made by Fantasy Fantasy Game, or whatever. They make all the, the good board games. 
they're really expensive and like really detailed and complex board games. Board games that are as complex as video games. Not even joking, it's just crazy. But that game's pretty cool. The, the way you play it, it's very it's very tactical and oh my god he's at 8 HP he's gonna die. Let's try to run. There you go. Oh he has almost no MP now. I'll have to uh Okay, so we came out of this, there's that cave there, and there's nothing else here. Star Wars toys costing a lot of money in the 90s. Mm, not really. Like, a little bit more, but now it's a little bit overpriced, I think. Especially, if you go with the classic stuff, they usually overprice. Like if you want something, uh, Rise of the Skywalker, it's gonna be... It's gonna be okay-ish. Uh, but if you go with something like that's from the original... Then it becomes kind of a collector's thing. It becomes like a... It's not a toy anymore. It's... A, an adult will buy it. So the price goes accordingly. It's just the market. They kind of explained it in the in the series uh, I talked about it when they came back with with the E-Man. So E-Man came out and they made a bunch of figurines and then they changed it and they wanted to modernize it. But by changing E-Man and make him him like a little different, like his character model, it's like the square dish on the Falcon Millennium or the thing in the Falcon. You, you don't put that there. It doesn't belong. Like the guys that want that. To buy that want the nostalgia of the old toys, they don't want the new toys. Like if I want Transformer toys right now, even for my kids, I would like to buy like the classic Optimus Prime, the classic Soundwave, Starscream, Megatron, that they transform exactly or almost exactly. If they can improve it, go go on, improve it. But like exactly how they transformed back in the day, because it was really, really well made toys. Again, I would refer you to that uh, Toys That Made Us on Netflix. It's the Transformer uh, uh, episode alone. It's just one hour. Oh my god. It's so good. And it explains so much stuff. All these Transformer toys came from different um, toys manufacturer in Japan. So to simplify it, it's not exactly that, by, but the Decepticons would come. Because if you noticed in the Transformers, you've got things that transform from robot to a car. Like they, they stay the same size, like there's a big robot, car, robot. And then there's other dudes that become smaller, that become guns, that become cassettes, cassette tapes, or cassettes, you know? So those were completely different toys from completely different companies. And uh, Asbro, I can't remember who owned Transformers, who made the Transformers, but they bought the 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 rights to make to bring those toys. Literally the same toys. They would just rebrand them, re-sticker them, Transformer. He is now Megatron. But Megatron, in Japan, was a good guy. Hey Nix, how's it going? Nothing like die-cast metal transformers. <laughs> so, I think we're gonna call it a stream right now, I'm gonna save it. We'll go in that cave later, and... Um... System, we'll do the suspend thing here. Yes, saved and back to menu. We'll be raiding someone. Are you ending off? Yes, I am ending off. We will be playing 
nothing tomorrow. Sunday, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, we'll continue uh, Colossal Cave Adventure. We'll finish Colossal Cave Adventure, and since I'm guessing that it won't take the whole stream, uh, I might uh, segue into some Neo Feud, which is exactly the same type of game. It's, it's adventure games. And then Monday, we'll continue Fantasy Star. What will replace Colossal Cave Adventure on Tuesday will not be Neo Feud. It will be X-Wing Alliance. <laughs> coincidence? Yes, it's complete coincidence that I was talking about Star Wars. I'm always talking about Star Wars. I love Star Wars. The 80s, 90s Star Wars. The pre-2000 Star Wars. That's what I usually say. Let's say pre-2001 Star Wars. But it's difficult to take Night of the Old Republic, but not necessarily the prequels, or take um, even uh, Jedi Knight 2, Jedi Outcast, or even X-Wing Alliance. X-Wing Alliance, when did that come out? That came out in 99, okay, 99, it's still pre... Uh, what about Knights of the Old Republic? That's 2000. 2003, holy shit. Yeah, maybe my, the last, and no, it wasn't even that good when I think about it. When I played it, I did shit on it a bit. But still, the last pretty good, no, Mandalorian's fine. I'm not gonna touch on Mandalorian. <laughs> season 2 is really great, by the way, if you haven't uh, watched it. Better than this season 1, def definitely. Definitely, it's not even a contest. Uh, we're gonna raid someone. Let's raid Mr. Craig. Who's playing? Some Wolfenstein 3D. So that's it for tonight. Thanks uh, everyone for watching and hanging out we'll be uh, playing more games and more of this on uh, Monday. Yeah, Monday. Sunday, Colossal Cave Adventure. Have a great night. Ciao. Thank you for your cooperation. Good night. I'll buy that. <laughs>